going on everyone? Daniel here. Welcome to my Luke Cage Season 1 Episode 6 Spoiler Review. Make sure you have seen the episode. It should take me about two minutes to recap it, then give you the pros, cons, and final score. Thanks so much for joining me. So we begin this episode with Scarf trying to overthrow Cottonmouth. He demands $100,000 but that bitch ends up getting denied. Uh, Cottonmouth ends up shooting Scarf, and he ends up leaving because there's like a witness across the bay, and he's like, hey, what's going on over there? You know, <laughs> Cottonmouth can still just kill him and then end up leaving, and, you know, not worry about that. But still, Scarf's, uh, you know, he, I think he's shot one or two times, and he's on the ground uh, on the other side of the car. Now, we cut to Pop's barber shop, and Claire talks to Luke. They end up finding Scarf because he is in Pop's barber shop. They take the bullet out of him, and he ends up confessing of his crimes. And I was working for Cottonmouth. I'm a dirty cop. Uh, I'll give you whatever information you need. So Luke is almost uh, Luke almost killed him. Luke, you know, uh, because he finds out. I think this is where because it's been a month since I've seen the episode, but I think it's where he said like I did kill Chico. Uh, and, of course, Luke knew Chico, so it's kind of like, well, you bastard, I might as well kill you right now. Uh, you're not a good man. So you're go he's going to bring Cottonmouth down. He says, don't leave me. I will help you bring Cottonmouth down. But the evidence is in my apartment, so they have to go to Scarf's apartment. Uh, Mariah is doing an interview, and Cottonmouth's men are after Luke and Scarf. There's this fight that goes on. Scarf ends up dying, and Cottonmouth is arrested. Now, the police want to keep these things, like the, the whole arrest and all this stuff, a secret and the fighting and all this. They want to keep it all a secret because it would make them look bad. Now on to the pros and cons. Well, for the pros, let's get the basic stuff out of the way. The music and cinematography is always great. Now, about two or three episodes ago is when they revealed that Scarf is a dirty cop and he's been working for Cottonmouth. He kills Chico and everything. And that's when I was like, no, 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 no. I don't like that. I don't like how cliched and almost predictable it is. Of course there's going to be a dirty cop working for Cottonmouth. It's just so predictable and cliched thing. And I didn't like that, man. I didn't care for Scarf. I thought he was boring. I thought he was this. I thought he was that. And then during this episode, actually his scenes... Uh, just the, even at the end when he's dying and Misty sees him and Claire Temple's in this episode as well. I love Claire Temple. Rosario Dawson did a fantastic job. She's part of the pros. Claire Temple's awesome. But Scarf actually became a character to me. He's not just, yeah, the regular cop working in Harlem. Yeah, we're going to do this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you need? Cotton mouth and then demanding and stuff. Like, he actually became a character and, and more in depth. And, like, his daughter, his kid ended up passing away. And, and you can kind of see it in the apartment when they go to the apartment and they see this thing. And, like, this guy, I, I, you know, he's not just a dirty cop. Like, he had a reason to switch to the other side, and he's a troubled past and all this. So he actually became a full-on character to me, and I, fi I finally understood why Scarf was the way he was. Uh, and, and I did kind of sympathize a little bit when he, he died. I thought it was a little, not emotional as Pop's death. No, no, no. Pop's death was way more emotional. But with Scarf dying, and, you know, Misty's right there, and, you know, she's... Your partner, you know, you, you, there's a big bond, like your dog dying or, you know, your best friend, your partner, you know, and, and they, how many years they've been doing it, I don't know. I don't. I actually don't know. Maybe it could have been a year or so, but either way, Scarf became a character to me, uh, to me in this episode, and then I was like, you know what, I kind of wish he lived a little bit, and so he could get Cottonmouth back and, you know, uh, see, you know, the future of what Luke Cage will, will, will come to be. Uh, but seriously, the actor who played Scarf did a really good job, man. I, I liked him at the end uh, because he wasn't so uh, douchey. He kind of worked with Luke at the end and Claire and all the rest, so yeah. Also, one more scene involving Scarf when they're taking the bullet out of him at Pop's Barber Shop. I thought that was really well done, uh, just effects wise and how they do it. Uh, and just digging deep in there and trying to get the bullet out. It's painful as hell, man. I think he needed a swig of a, a drink or something, man. It's really painful. Uh, looks really gross, and he's going through all the pain, but yeah, he deserves to go through the pain. Uh, so it's like back and forth, like, oh, man, sucks he's in pain, but yeah, he does deserve to go through pain. He killed Chico. I really enjoyed the opening, but if I could give a tip to anyone out there, if you're working for a kingpin, if you're working for a boss, maybe don't demand $100,000. Uh, be humble, maybe ask for 25000 instead of 100000 Uh Yeah, that, that's going to get you killed, man. That's going to get you on the hit list. But uh, I don't think no one expected to see Scarf and Cottonmouth like, in the beginning of the episode. Like, oh, where are we at? Oh, there they are. Like, okay, that's cool. And the meeting went on, and then Scarf... 
again, later in the episode, I started to like Scarf way more, but at the beginning, I'm like, here we go, Scarf, what are you doing? What are you, come on, come on, come on. And uh, it ended up, you know, from beginning of the episode, not liking Scarf, to the end of the episode, a smidge liking Scarf. Like, God damn it, man, he could, he could have been alive. He could have seen the future of Luke Cage. He could have seen how the world is. Uh, so they took the character out, man. That could have been a little more better. Now, going on to the cons. When I wrote this review a month ago and I saw it, and I am a few weeks late. I'm over a month late. I am sorry for that. I, ex I, I uh, explained that in episode one of my review there. But the thing is, is, like... I said to myself after this, I like, wear shades, and I don't like shades that much. All shades is is glasses. What do you need? Like that's all he is. He's he's not nothing. He doesn't have no superpowers. I thought he had powers or some shit, but all he does is wear glasses, and he's just this guy that's a bodyguard. That's it. That all shades is. You you got Theo Rossi for that. Basically, he's Juice with shades from Sons of Anarchy. Jeez. Anyway. I, I don't I didn't want shades in this episode for one thing, but I was just thinking to myself, where is shades? It would make sense for shades to like be in this episode and do stuff. Like that was the thing. Like he disappeared for a few episodes and then he came back, but there was really no explanation on where he really was for the past few episodes. Hammer tech, I guess, or Diamondback, stuff like that. Went, to, but there was really no amazing explanation. Like where have you been for the past few episodes? No one cares. And of course, no shocker here, there were a few slow scenes within this episode, especially with Mariah Dillard. Boo! You know, I, I, I listen, I love Alfred Woodard, or the actress. I think she's a great actress. She did a phenomenal job. She's awesome as Mariah. Uh, and I don't hate her character. Definitely there are some scenes that are interesting, especially I think the next episode is the most interesting one, Mariah. But most of her scenes in here as well, it's like, boo, boo, like... Just go to jail already, get arrested, you know, go die, get killed or something, juice. Something like that, because you just want to see this character die, you're like, are you going to die soon? Are you really going to, like, can you die, please? And also, like I said, I saw this episode over a month ago, so I will say this. Maybe if I would have reviewed it a day after seeing it, this, this is my fault, but since it's a month, I don't remember most of the action. Like, I'm, I'm sure the practical effects and everything were great. I just don't remember the action. I don't I don't remember what happened. Uh, now, in other episodes, it's memorable for me, but for this episode, I don't remember most of the action. I don't know what happened. I think they stopped a car or something in here. I don't know. I, I It's forgettable. It's a forgettable action episode for me. But overall, I thought it was a good episode. Not great, not amazing, not bad, not horrible, just good. I'm going to give Luke Cage Season 1, Episode 6, a B-. minus. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed, make sure to smack the like button. You can comment down below to me what you guys thought about the episode. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Share this with your friends and hit that subscribe button for more awesome Luke Cage reviews. I'll see you for Iron Fist in March. Till next time, bye-bye.